Brothers, considering our, our theme, Be Still and Know That I Am God, I want to reflect this morning on both readings. On both readings. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians and also the Gospel. I want to make a connection because I think there is a connection between both selections. Tranquility and silence and stillness reveals talents. Tranquility reveals, silence reveals graced abilities. St. Paul today says, Nevertheless, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to progress even more and to aspire to live a tranquil life and to work with your own hands. The tranquil life for them, taking the time to be still so that the Thessalonians could peacefully use their talents and work either with their hands or with their minds. The literal translation of be still, I think, taken from the Greek is hush. And in modern terms, shut up. <laughs> the gospel today, Master, you gave me two talents, see I've made two more. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Jesus is thrilled that these servants did what they were supposed to do. Use their talents, be creative, be industrious. Brothers, I think it is within a tranquil life that Paul calls the Thessalonians to, that it becomes easier for us to discover, to develop, and to use our talents for the good of the church, for the good of the order, for the good of our fraternity here. A man and his family were in a motel room. He was to give a speech at a convention. The program was extremely precise. He had only a certain number of minutes to give that speech, and therefore it was important for him to have the correct time. He was going out of his mind because he had misplaced his watch. Well, his wife and his children were running all over the motel room looking for the watch. He was in a panic because time was growing short. And suddenly he shouted at the top of his voice, Stop! Be still! Freeze! And everybody just stopped where they were. Total silence. Until they heard the ticking of the watch. And in silence they found it. Brothers, our daily lives can be like that motel room. We are constantly on the move. We tell the new friars who come, jump on the moving train to Capuchin College. We are not in a motel room, we are in Capuchin College. We're not searching for a watch, but we're searching and pondering and wondering about the answers to all of our questions. Who am I? What are my talents, my gifts? How can I use them? However, we find ourselves running constantly, aren't we? Constantly running down Harewood Road, in the halls, in the stairwells, running and chatting and looking and listening to noise and what's on our screens. Brothers, distractions make a tranquil life difficult. Distractions impede our ability to be still and to discover our gifts. Be still and know that I am God. What is St. Paul telling his listeners that makes this selection the inspired work of God? <laughs> he seems to be saying to the Thess Thessalonians, you're doing well with your fraternal charity, but do more. Be tranquil, learn to calm down, to stop, to be quiet, so that you can be peaceful and become more sensitive to, listen to, respond to, 
and be aware of God's wonderful presence when you work with your hands or your minds, when you are discovering your talents, and when you use your talents as you live and you work. I think that might be what he was saying to them. Paul uses the word tranquil. I looked it up. I googled the word tranquil. Silence. Stillness. Serenity. Composure. Coolness. Even temperedness. Control, unexcitability, unflappability, imperturbability, sobriety, untroubledness, and the last one was togetherness. And what's the opposite of tranquil or be still or silence? Babble, blare, bluster, cacophony, chatter, clamor, clangor, din, hubbub, racket, rattle, roar, tumult, uproar. Pope Francis says this, when the mind is not so occupied and busy, awareness of the heart naturally begins. Inside each of us, there is a vastness of presence. God overflows our normal limits of self and personality. We find ourselves more forgiving and offering the gift of life to others. From the well of silence in our heart comes generosity, gentleness, innocence, and joy. Wow. Isn't the Holy Father, I think, saying something similar? From the well of silence in our hearts comes the talents of generosity, gentleness, innocence, and joy. Be still and know that I am God. Did Jesus value silence, stillness? Many times in the Gospels when we hear that Jesus went into the mountains to be alone, to be still, he didn't say to his followers, you come with me. We will chat along the way and have a planning meeting in one of our favorite spots. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. In Mark's gospel, and bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. In Luke's gospel, and it was at this time that he went off to a mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. In Mark's Gospel again, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. And finally, in Luke's Gospel, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness. Jesus went alone to be in the stillness of silence so that he could pray for the strength to use his divine talents and to discover the will of the Father so that he could obediently do what the Father wanted him to do. And what he was to do was to perform the Father's talents. What is or what are the talents of God? The talent of God the Father is love. Love that is not withheld, but love that is outpoured. Jesus is the manifestation of that love. He is the talent of God the Father. He became the Word made flesh. Jesus is the work and the manifestation of God the Father. And with obedience, he uses his talents to fulfill the plan of the Father for him and the talents that flow from Jesus that are divine in nature are all that he says and all that he does in the Gospels. Jesus continually realizes the plan of the Father when, in stillness and silence, he listens and discovers. Jesus then leaves the stillness of the mountain and knows what he must do, the Father's will and plan. He cannot be disobedient to the Father's plan. He must 
share that talent of love, mercy, and forgiveness to those who need him. Francis did the same as Jesus. Francis went into the caves of the Carchery, Laverna, Celli, uh, all of those uh, hermitages. He may have had Leo with him, but within the stillness of the caves, Francis discovered his talents, his gifts, and with an obedient heart, he did the Father's will and used those talents, preaching, rebuilding the church, reforming and revitalizing the life of the church. So what does that mean for all of us today, this morning, as we ponder our theme, be still and know that I am God? Here the word still comes from a Hebrew word meaning to let go or release. The meaning would best be understood to say, cause yourself to become restrained or to let go. So, let go of distractions, worries, and selfishness. Let go of noise. How do we let go? There is a requirement for stillness, serenity, Silence, unflappability, contentment. There is the need to avoid cacophony, chatter, clangor, din, hubbub, roar, tumult, uproar. Brothers, if we are not still, we will not know God. We will not let go and let God manifest his gifts to us unless we take the time to be still. We will not know how the Spirit of God has filled our lives with gifts and talents that we, with obedience, have to use. Did we hear what Jesus said at the end of the day's gospel to the man who buried his talents and didn't use them? Throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Heaven, help us. Please, no. So for me, and for some of us, I have to be a good priest. Because the Lord has blessed me with that gift. I have to be a good capuchin to the best of my ability. And within these wonderful two vocations, do what I have been graced to do. And those other small matters that Jesus speaks of today, being faithful, I have to cook. I have to cut hair. I have to read. I have to learn how to pray. I have to do gardening. I have to continually learn and mature as a friar. If I don't, I will be thrown into the darkness outside. Bob McCreary must do spiritual direction. Paul must continue to preach well. Tom must continue to write. Bob Herrick must continue to play and sing. Luke and Rico, you must continue to play the violin. Ross, you must continue to do music and perfect woodworking. Andrew must continue to bake wherever he is. And all of us must continue, all of us must continue to respond generously to our talents because we have to be obedient to God who gave them to us as pure gift. And why? Because we don't want to be thrown into the darkness. Jesus used his, talent, his divine talents. He pondered and discovered how to use them when he went into the stillness alone and by himself communed with his Father. Brothers, it is mandatory that every day we stop, go to our mountain or our cave, be still, listen, and speak to the divine murmuring in our hearts, because we'll have the result. We will know who we are. We will come to realize how we've been graced and what we can do to show the person of Jesus to every person we meet.